The Dell Show. Oh man, I love that. <laughs> it's so funny because we decided to do that before the show. And before that, I was always like, I need like a war cry to start the podcast. Yeah, get your, get your juices flowing. And it's funny because I did I did an epi- couple episodes without you and uh, you were indisposed. Sorry, I got Wait. something in my drink. I'm trying to fish out. But anyways, Uh-oh. and then uh, Uber fan Brady Dinspear, he was like, where's the where's the Dale show thing? Cause he was listening, he was catching up on episodes and there's, there's like two that I didn't do anything. And then me and you started talking about it in one episode. Yeah. He's like, can you just send me a voice, a voice message? So I did. And he was like, that's uh-huh. awesome. All you so needed that was, one was just to hear you. your voice. Yeah. All you needed was to hear your voice. I know and how that feels. Yeah. And it's funny. Cause if, as a war cry, it would definitely suit because if I'm like running into like battle with a sword, I'm definitely calling it the Dale show. <laughs> that is the Dale show. Everyone <laughs> watch me do sword stuff to these people. Yeah. I mean, you could sword invent stuff. your own war cry, but you can also yell the Dale show too, if you want. I, I So it's funny, man. Like before I started doing the show with you, I would watch yeah. the show when it was the original episodes when it was just you. And yeah. I always laughed when I heard you say the Dale Show, like super yeah. loud and i was like whatever happens if i like have to do the show by myself like you're indisposed oh, yeah. for a, a month and i have to do the Dale <laughs> show i'm gonna have to war cry your name yeah. so i'm not gonna get used to like it's not no, the jeff it's... show so yeah <laughs> the jeff show not the same ring the dale show mm-hmm. has a better ring to it yeah you could be like the jeff temporary show yeah <laughs> or the, <laughs> yeah Jeff yeah. installments. The Jeff, the Jeff installment. No one, mm. no one, zero, zero watchers. If this, <laughs> this is about you. Yeah. Uh, okay. So last, we're doing. This is episode thirty-five. I do. Uh, twenty twenty-three and me part dos. Last week, two weeks ago, we only got through four months, but we had a yeah. lot of uh housekeeping to take care of. There was so... an hour of banter before the show started. I mean, that's what podcasts are. They just banter, right? It's funny because I watch like I, I the what? Okay. Full disclosure: This is how I pick how did or how I I strive to do a podcast. I just do what I want to hear. So like, and most of the time, the only way I know what I want to hear is by listening to other shows and being like, "Oh, I don't like that." Yeah, like it sparks a it sparks an idea, right? Yeah. So I'll be listening to other podcasts and there's some that have absolutely no banter. And I'm like, this is bullshit. Why would I listen to this? I could just read this on the newspaper or the news sites, the news, the news sites. There's the no newspaper paper. anymore. Yeah. Oh, yeah, those don't exist. Speaking of print journalism dying. Did you hear what happened to sports illustrated? No. What happened? They laid off everybody, but it's like oh. the most dumb. I'm bringing it up. Cause it's kind of like conspiracy, but it's like, Oh, okay. It's not a conspiracy, but it's an example of how bad things are. So what happened was, I okay, I might get these names wrong. I learned this off a TikTok video where you get all your knowledge. All your information. Yeah. So the people running Sports Illustrated was like the arena group. And they rented the name from some other company. I can't remember what it's called. The something group LLC, which owns 50 companies, but they own like Reebok, Airwalk tap out Shaquille yeah. O'Neal's likeness like they own his likeness so anytime <laughs> Shaquille O'Neal wants to do his likeness he has to rent the um license from them so they if he own... ever wants to do another Shazam Kazam movie yeah. Shazam movie with Sinbad it's gonna be yeah. tough yeah. <laughs> uh, or and they also own the estate for Elvis Holy and crap. Marilyn Monroe and what else and they so they own all this random stuff so what they do is they own Sports Illustrated. I guess they own the IP yeah. and they rent the ability to use the IP to this arena group. Okay. And this arena group missed a payment of like three and a half million bucks. Just a little. And one. then the other company, fuck, I sh- here, I'll look it up quickly because I, I tweeted about it and I have yeah. the name oh, you, in the you, tweet. Yeah, you still have a Twitter? Are there still people on Twitter or is it just no, bots? No, nobody reads too. my tweets. Um, I, I would um, read them if I were there, but I'm not there. So. Yeah. 
you know, uh, where is it? Yeah. How do we sell oh, our like this? That's dude. what I want to know. Yeah. Sorry. I didn't even put it in the tweet. I just linked okay. to the video that says it. anyways. So this company was like, since you missed a payment, you now owe us 43 million. And then sports illustrated was like laid off all of their employees. And they're like, we don't know who still works here. We'll figure it out. So right now it's like maybe in limbo. But the reason I wanted to bring this up is because this is just an example of how capitalism fucked everyone because capitalism used to be like, Hey, you need money to live. You don't want to do the fucking barter system here. You work for me. Here's some money, save some money, buy a house. But then it turned into this all like these schemey guys being like, how can I make as much money as possible? And one of the worst things that's happening with capitalism right now is these lo very large companies are treating everything like a hedge fund. Like right, you have yeah. BlackRock, who's buying all these um, single detached family homes right. and they're buying them all up and they're treating them like a hedge fund where they have like just bakes. Basically they're treating them like a stock. So they have them and then they rent them out and then they take the money off that. And then they pay like the investors of the hedge fund. And then they have, you have this thing that's, I think it's partial. It's half owned. The weirdest one is this thing called hypnosis and it's HIP gnosis, like the yeah. uh, that like, thing we were talking about. Gnosis. Gnosticism? Yeah. Hip, it's hip like gnostic. That. Yeah. Yeah. So they hip own hypnotism. shit like they bought half of Neil Young's back album. Right. They bought Justin Bieber's entire library for 200 million because he had that base paralysis thing. Right. Yeah. And yeah. then he couldn't perform. Couldn't and then I guess he just again. said. I'm fucking not doing this. So he sold yeah. his whole back catalog for $200 million. Whoa. And so those companies like hypnosis is treating that shit like a hedge fund where they're doing the same thing. They're like, they have all these investors. Like the, the way a hedge fund works is like rich people give a guy money and then he buys stocks and different things. Hedge it, I guess, hedges your bets or something. It has nothing to do with yeah. grass. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I, did, I didn't research this. But what yeah. he does is all the profit they take and they give dividends to the investors and stuff. So now yeah. they're they're done fucking everybody over with just stocks. So now they're going out and they're buying companies, Businesses. houses, yeah. Yeah. fucking people's music and just basically whatever they can to make rich people richer. Right. And Sports Illustrated is just the, the last next in line to suffer yeah. the consequences. But. Yeah, man. Late stage capitalism. It's wonderful. It's all now, it's all going to collapse a, at some point. I think. No. White pill, Dale. Remember? My oh, New damn it, here white pill you. I think we're turning a corner. <laughs> yeah. And we're not going to view cat like everybody says. We're getting like, newspapers back. No. Like what you said about late stage capitalism and stuff. Everybody views just capitalism as bad, but we have to educate them that capitalism can be good. Just just you and me personally. Everybody's <laughs> right. out. Everybody's out for evil. We got to be the shining beacons right. of light. The shining, show the good oh. side of capitalism, especially in Canada, because we need a little bit of social flavor right. in our capitalism because we're too big and spread out for yeah. just straight capitalism to work. We are definitely too big and, and spread out. That's for sure. So I was thinking about this at work when I'm not thinking about work and I'm just yeah. fucking either daydreaming or listening to podcasts. And the way I, I put it, this is as like I tried to boil it down as much as I could. And it's like now we have capitalism centered on helping out corporations. We need to get back to like the 80s, 90s capitalism before the neoliberals fucked everything up and get capitalism back to being based on the benefits of people and workers. Well, you're going to have a tough. Oh. I know why. What all I got to do is take on the major corporations. Yeah, you can have a tough time clawing back that money from the people who fucked everybody to get it. Or Jeff, this as a zillennial Gen X <laughs> millennial <laughs> cusp, this is my underachieving because I just say I'm going to fight the corporation. Yeah, but you don't actually fight the corporation and I don't do anything. <laughs> and then when we don't get viewers on the podcast, because I don't, you do you any can't marketing fight the or corporations anything? from Twitter. I'll just say, hey, the must have shadow banned me. Those damn corporations don't want to hear shadow Dale's. shadow banned you. They don't want to hear Dale's truth. They're not, not letting my you, voice out. 
It's not that you only have 300 followers. It's that you've been mm. shadow banned. It's oh, not that you're, fucking... it's not that you barely scratched the, t- the taint of the algorithm. It's the <laughs> shadow ban. I, I love the um, optimism of 300 followers, Jeff. <laughs> I don't even know. I, I think like at the height, I mm-hmm. remember meeting somebody. I don't even remember who it was. I remember meeting somebody uh, who I knew from Twitter, like in real life. And they're like, yeah. Oh my God, it's Mr. Goats. And I'm like, Hey dude. And they were like, they're like, I, I looked at your followers and you only have like a thousand followers. And I'm like, yeah, I'm like, I'm not popular. And they're like, I thought you were like this star. And I'm like, who is this person? And like, what is this digital <laughs> life you live in? I'm very much not a star. Who man. is this person you think I am? Do you want to hear I'm how many followers? Influential. What's that? I have on Twitter. Yeah, how many? Now I'm curious. Okay, heart. Sorry, I'm just trying to. No, this is there. this is important. Important. Deets I have right 650 followers. That is oh, wow. way down. I used that's to have like 900, but well, I guess I'm not on people... there anymore. So I'm not following you anymore. That's all. That's just people going to Blue Sky, and it's uh me being shadow banned, and uh, yeah, my being shadow banned. Belief in Alex Jones telling the truth, and people can't handle it. Actually, you know what? <laughs> I'd say Joe Rogan has lost me the most online friends and appearance oh, yeah. of anything. Polarizing I'm fucking, characters, right? I'll fucking ride or die, Joe Rogan. I don't give yeah. a fuck. That yeah, man, you're the man. You're the man on that. That man has taught me so much shit. Like not him personally. Like he didn't come to my house and yep. give me. <laughs> he one just on came one over and gave you a, a TED talk. But yeah, just like the talk. shit I learned off his podcast, like yep. Graham Hancock, hardcore history, all that shit. Those are the two shining lights. And then I always like find new comics because of him and stuff like that. The uh... I can't even remember the name of the guy. The one, the one guy that I, that I found off of the Joe Rogan podcast that I thought was interesting. Fuck, I can't remember his name for the life of me. He's the nature guy. He goes, oh, uh, uh, goes into the wilderness and like Don Flores. No, and explores stuff. He's a younger guy with a beard. Mm. All right, now I gotta look this up. Yeah, look it up, buddy. We gotta know. There's probably like the two listeners are probably know who it is. Oh yeah, they're they're like. They're like punching their steering wheel forest galante oh yeah yeah that's the dude that was him. yeah they talk about he's kind of like he tells all these crazy stories about like how he was in the like in the jungle and he was like he was searching for a tasmanian tiger and shit like that and he had he has a show on uh national geographic and everything too and we watched it with our son one night and it was like it was it was entertaining right like he's yeah in, like he's like searching for stuff in the wild forest mm-hmm. galante and and it's like, and then I like started, I, like, I was like, oh, okay, that guy sounds kind of interesting. Maybe I'll watch this show. We watch a show. And then I started doing research about him after we watched the show. And it's like, maybe he's a doctor. Maybe he's not. There's no actual <laughs> proof that he's like a, like a zoologist or anything. Yeah. Right. Like, it's like, all the, like, oh God, not again with this bullshit. Yeah. Well, whatever. If he knows what he knows, <sighs> that's the There's thing about facts, line. Jeff, you can figure it out pretty quick if knowledge so, is true or not. I just gotta like I I just I was like I don't know man I don't know how people do that they get fucking famous on a possibility like Doctor Phil's not really a doctor and like all these people what? that make up fake credentials and nobody back them because they're charismatic or some bullshit so anyway. like that like that fucking Why guy I- oh what's his name he wrote Fear and Loathing person and and no one cares you just gotta make it up who's the guy who wrote Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas uh Hunter S Thompson yeah. He used to say he was a doctor to get fake credentials, to get into stuff, to write stuff about it. You know which one I hear all the time? People refer to themselves as the reverend because they got like internet ordained and they're like, oh. I'm the reverend. I'm like, you and fucking everybody else I talk to. With their own. Sorry, <laughs> if the reverend is listening to this, I'm sorry. I'm going <laughs> to leave that open because I could be anybody. Yeah, I just got to apologize to you, Jeff, and all the listeners. I just got a notification that I have shitty internet. So if oh. you hear any bleep bloops it's not me not it's not me being a boomer with technology it's my <laughs> internet it's the fucking corporations trying to hold me back they're trying to to yeah they're uh they're shadow banning you right yeah now. they don't want me to white pill anybody they're like this guy's spreading yeah. too much happiness too much which, happiness stop it with that in real so life, positive you, if you knew me in real life you'd get that joke yeah <laughs> I, get, I know i know i know Except okay, let's here. get into this because, uh, yeah, let's do it. Because we don't want to be here all night. We want to do well, actual I mean, you stuff know, with our Saturdays. It's my, it's my Friday, so uh, so mm. I'm like, I went, I worked all day, so I'm tired. Nice, it's my Saturday. 
so tired. <laughs> it's your Saturday. Yeah, I haven't okay. quite got used to this uh this Tuesday. Yeah, your uh, your whole week slipped. You're on the fucking yeah, I'm, on a, I'm on a time loop. <laughs> like, I, I was gonna different... say yeah. I was gonna say you're on the seventh day Adventist week, but you're actually opposite because they no, yeah. have yeah, yeah. Their so Saturdays are my Sunday. Sabbath is Monday now. That's all I don't know what that what that mm. means, but I'm gonna it's kind of rad. I, I'm gonna tell you this, and I know I said let's rip into it now. I'm doing a tangent. Cause that's, that's podcast. Tangent me up, baby. Uh, me up. The, the, so far the coolest thing about it. And I don't want this to sound mean towards my family, but having Monday as my Sunday, it means I get the house to myself. Ooh, every man loves a house to himself, dude. Yeah. It's my, like, where has this been my whole life? Like I, yeah, dude. on Monday I wake up, well, I wake up with everybody else. Cause they all have to go to work and school. So I'm up regardless. Yeah. And then I'm just like, have a coffee, go to the gym watch some movies and like motorcycle season i will be going on solo rips in the am oh that's right? nice everybody else is at work and i'm all Brap! later mashed potatoes so yeah. yeah dude if i was fucking filthy rich i would have a second apartment and it would just be empty it would have a very comfortable couch a chair and a video game system and i would just dude. go in there and listen to shitty music and play video games. Is it like that? Like yeah. that meme that you always see? It's like uh, um, women see men doing this and and think, how can they be happy? It's literally like a, a like a camp chair and a TV, yeah, and a, and yeah a exactly. PlayStation and, and a cooler with with some drinks in it. Fucking perfect. Leave me actually, alone. Yeah. that's a fully, <laughs> that's fully a lie because one of my secret like loves is very expensive furniture. I don't really? love it because it's expensive. It's just like the furniture that I want is super expensive. Like a fucking leather studded wingback chair, like oh, four thousand dollar things. Oh yeah. tangent time again. Yeah. yeah. This was a million years ago when my wife and I were dating. Mm -hmm. Um, do you remember that company Inspiration Furniture? They nope. used to they used to have a showroom right near Granville Island. It was like on West Fourth. Anyway. This place was wild. It had like affordable furniture and fucking crazy balls furniture. Yeah. We went in there one time and I sat down in this chair and it was, nice. it was an aviator chair, aviator okay. style chair. So look those What's up when that? you get a chance. It's kind of like a mid back. I'll look it up right now. Yeah. Look it up right now. Look I'm up still an aviator listening. Chair. But it's leather and it's, it was like, it looked like from an, it looked like an airplane. I sat in this fucking chair and I said to her, I'm like, Allie, this is the chair that I want to have. Yeah. And the dude came rushing over like that scene in Wayne's world where he starts playing the guitar and he's like, Hey, yeah. right. And the guy's like, yeah. Hey, sir, that chair is $15,000. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, it feels like $15,000. <laughs> and he's like, are you interested in buying this chair? And I said, Oh, I'm very interested in buying this chair. My bank account, however, is not. Oh, he's like, zing. Can you please exit the chair? <laughs> he said, can you please exit the chair? Yeah. Who like, says that? How does he know I don't have, I don't have $15,000, but I definitely did not have $15,000 at that point in my life. But yeah. Yeah. Um, dude, I've never sat in a chair to this day that has been as good as that chair was. Oh, okay. I see it. It's like, um. It's kind of like a chair with the high arms. Yes. Yes. Oh, and yeah. Like, I dig you that. You sit in it and you, and you rest. And dude, the leather was like nothing supple. I've ever felt before. Yeah. Supple leather? Was the it cushioning so was perfect. Man, if nice. I could find that chair again, like that was so many years ago. Man, now I got to hunt this chair down. Anyway, let's get oh, into man. it. Dude, this chair has like pot rivets. It looks like it's made yeah. out of the old B-52. That's awesome. Okay. Uh, when I get rich and buy expensive furniture, I will get an aviator chair. And you Seriously. know what? I'll buy you an aviator chair. We could be oh, like Chandler and Joey yeah. in matching fifteen thousand. Oh, I chairs. love it! I love it! I love it! Yeah, an aviator lounge chair has like high, <laughs> high arms, and then like kind of a medium back. Yeah. yeah. Oh man, dude, I get like, I get chills thinking about that chair. Mm -hmm. The it only the problem thing. is they don't recline. Yeah, the 15, the, yeah, they don't recline, but that's not the point. You're not sitting in them to recline. You're sitting in them to have a whiskey and just relax, right? Nice. We'll, we'll, we'll get customized <sighs> reclining chairs. Okay. I love it. So last episode, we got through the first four months. We finished April. So now on Bart Dawes, we're going to start in May. All right. So May 1st, the First Republic Bank is seized. 
Regulators seize First Republic Bank and strike a deal to sell the bulk of its operations to J.P. Morgan Chase, heading off a chaotic collapse. And you might ask, Dale, why do you even care about another bank collapse? Because you already said the Silicon Valley Bank in the previous months. And I'm going to tell you why. So this First Republic Bank was seized. They did a bank run. Same thing that happened with Silicon Valley. But then, fuck it, I, the regulator sees it and they're like, what are we going to do with this bank? We got to. So what they're like, there's this whole like drama drama with like the politics and yeah. like economy people. I listen to a politics, a political Podcast, when did you so start listening to political podcasts? When they the when Joe Rogan had them as guests, on uh, the show, and I was like, "Oh, these guys are so, they're pretty cool." So, and it's like a very tolerable, digestible political podcast called Breaking Points. Yeah, I highly recommend. And it's like they got a left wing and a right wing host, and they they don't they don't fight too much, so it's not awkward like that because I can't handle listening to people fight because I'm in a relationship. If I want that, I'll just go you home. Just stay, you just stay home <laughs> and pick a fight with your wife. Yeah, yeah. I if it. I want to listen yeah. to fighting at work, I'll just call in sick. Yeah, um, totally. Yeah. <laughs> so, so anyways, the drama was the Federal Reserve or whatever, the regulators, they were going to give security, they were going to insure all the deposits in the First Republic, and this was a problem because what usually what happens is banks are insured under the regulatory board to like so what happens if is if the bank goes under and they can't pay the people who've deposited anybody under a certain threshold gets their money back and usually that's dependent on the insurance plans that the bank bought yeah. and what happened with first republic was they didn't buy that much insurance so they could only afford to insure deposits up to say 750 grand right. i'm saying that because i don't know you, the specific you don't know number. the actual skews and numbers yeah. yeah so what the regulatory regulators were going to do was they're like we're going to just we're going to insure everybody's money this bank is too big we can't let it fail and then everybody was pissed off because silicon bank went under and they're like you didn't and there's all these like there's like five or six banks that fell and only um Silicon Valley and First Republic were big enough to like talk about. The other ones were just like, I don't know, like credit union size. Yeah. And all their people were just fucked and they didn't want to give those people insurance money because it wasn't like they weren't like big time corporate honcho dudes or whatever. So everybody was pissed that the regulators were going to do this. So what happened instead was the government, I'm just going to say Joe Biden did it personally, even though he's way too senile to do anything by himself. <laughs> they gave it to J.P. Morgan Chase, Jamie Diamond. And that's a problem because J.P. Morgan Chase could not have under like the antitrust laws. He couldn't have just got First Republic by buying it because it's too much cons consolation, consolidation, consolidation. What's consolidation, the, yeah, yeah, consolidation it's, of banking powers and stuff. They would own too much. Essentially, they would own yeah. too much banking. They would like have banking. too. They would have yeah, they would have to too many. Much of the pie chart of bank stuff. Okay, that's the technical term. Sorry the, if I lost you with the, my jargon. The pie chart of <laughs> bank stuff. Yeah. Wow. So and this JP week on Morgan, Dale Weeds reads Wikipedia. Yeah. The pie and, chart of bank stuff. And Jamie Dimon, the head of J.P. Morgan Chase, is like way too powerful already because he's basically has so much money behind him with his banks that he can be like, we don't want you to do this, and people will be like, oh yes, sir, please give us some money. We so, won't do that. All you and I have to do is wrestle that money away from him. From his name is Jamie Diamond, right? I think that's on purpose. So you think of Screech. We got <laughs> I Justin didn't Diamond. Of, I didn't even. I was thinking of uh, uh, Diamond David Lee Roth. Yeah, because you hear Jamie <laughs> Diamond and you're like, that's that's not a rich, not a real name. person's that's, name. Yeah, that's a that's, rock star. That's Screech Power's name. Yeah, Samuel that's the guy Screech from Powers. Saved by the Bell who made a fucking porno and then went to jail and then shanked died. a guy yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. so oh, i just wanted to bring rest, that rest up power king you can like and the, this was my big idea was when this was when i was like teetering on being black pilled i was like why don't we just run every bank and fuck over the rich people because uh, uh, their insane. insurance can't pay off the super big investors they can only pay off the little guys so it's right. actually opposite of what usually happens but I, I that's probably also 
why the regulators gave First Republic to J.P. Morgan Chase because they're like, we don't want it to look like this bank can fail because right. then all these other banks, it'll be like a domino effect. So, yeah. Yeah, we don't really want that to happen. Or, again, Biden is a cuck and sucks Jamie Dimon's pee-pee. That's more why, plausible. Why did you go <laughs> cuck and then not rhyme it? I don't understand. It said pee-pee huh? instead. Oh, <laughs> uh, and then sucked his baby. I want this to be a clean ish a show? family show. Oh, yeah. sorry. I already swore like three times. That's my that's bad. fine. So, I, I've okay. probably already swore too. Uh, I don't also, know. you're actually yeah. been, you've been pretty clean these days. Like it's me. I, I, I'm yeah, you're, you, I'm you're more the I'm the more the swearing guy. It's only because saying pee pee and fudge and stuff <laughs> is way funnier to me. It is pretty like, funny. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's pretty funny. I agree. <laughs> um, okay. Yeah. Any any more discussion on the banks or should we move on? No, I'm I'm I don't like the banks anyway. So let's move on. Okay. On May 5th, the pandemic emergency was officially announced as over. Ah. The WHO says COVID is still there. You can still get it. Even if you're boosted, we're not going to talk about that because that just starts fights and it's annoying. <laughs> <laughs> so COVID's still around, but the yeah. emergency is over. Right. So the and World the... Health Organization lifted the Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, the World Health Organization, you know that they're trying to get it. The World Health Organization is trying to get comp or countries to sign on that if the WHO declares like a pandemic emergency again, they get to set the rules of what people do in their countries. Like what happened in this last pandemic, they were just like, we suggest you do this, but what they yeah. want to do is they want to be like the narrative. Yeah. You have to do this. And they want 5% of each company's um, uh, medical spending. Oh, and, okay. So, yeah, I was going to say there's always a money factor to yeah. this. There's always a follow the cash trail. This is the absolute only one singulatory thing where I want Trump to be president. Because last time oh, Trump why? was president. Why would you do that? Why would you go do that? When Trump was president last time, he defunded the WHO and left. He took the U.S. out of the WHO oh. and the U.S. pays for like 80% of World Health Organization's funding. Okay. Second is China. Right. Yeah. And I don't want them to have control because it's all like that Klaus Schwab, uh, Great Reset, WEF, right, 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 WHO, right, right. Davos, all that shit. If yeah. you don't, I don't know. I, I don't want to be like the podcast that introduces <laughs> people into that. But are you sure? If that doesn't black pill you, nothing will. But all yeah, right. just go yeah. look. Yeah, 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 totally. Um, yeah. Actually, I will direct people. There is a podcast called uh, Occult Symbolism in Culture or something. It used to be Conspiracies in Pop or Occult Symbolism in Pop Culture. It's hosted by Isaac Weishaupt. And he oh, did right. a yeah. super you've, good. You talked about Weishaupt like a bunch of times. Yeah, yeah, he did a super good three-parter on The Great Reset where he worked. He read Klaus Schwab's book and he goes through it and you know, he'll explain all that. And then you'll just be angry at the world like me. Oh, Dale. <laughs> oh, we don't want we, we don't want that. I don't want to be angry. I don't want to be angry. I want to be happy. I'm getting I, there. So it's it's a two for um, May 5th. The world pandemic is closed. And May 6th, old sausage fingers, King Charles's crown. King Charles's crown. Oh, who the is sausage very, fingers bother me. Very involved with the World Economic Forum. Right. He's been in it since the 70s. But wow. uh yeah. yeah. Hey, remember when he was like, I'm not going to be king. I'm going to yeah. abdicate the throne. Do you remember? And re yeah, that never happened, right? He fully took it. And he's just mm -hmm. like, yeah. 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 Because yeah. they were like, you can't marry Camilla Parker Bold because she, that, she's that fit. makes your family uninbred because she's an outsider. <laughs> she's an outsider. How do you expect to carry on the family bloodline if you don't fuck your sister? And then they're like, hey, Charles. And so what happened was Charles was like, I will ab abdicate the throne since this girl can suck the chrome off a trailer hitch, I need <laughs> to marry her so she doesn't go do that to any of the other sausage yeah. fingered princes. And then 
<laughs> they, they got married and then they're like hey charles remember when you advocated the throne and he was like oh yeah um i'm just gonna go over to the whf i'll announce it later and then yeah and it's funny because this game was going for like 20 years because the queen just lived so lived for fucking, fucking long ever <laughs> forever how old yeah. was she when she died like 92 or something yeah like 90. No, she was up. queen for over 70 years dude that's insane let's talk about having a job for way too long oh my god could you imagine having the job you have now for 70 years yeah yeah because i just started it so (laughs) yeah Yeah. yep yep oh she was 96 96 years old does um does anybody you work with watch podcasts about conspiracy oh i'm sure that they do i'm sure that they do Do, have you uh, told them about this one yet I have not. I have not done that yet. It's still my early. Feelings, I can't wait till I, I got to get past probation and then I'll Yeah, I was going to say, my feelings <laughs> won't be hurt if you don't bring it up for three months. Yeah, yeah. There's, yeah, there's yeah. like, there's a, cu- there's got to be a cushion there. So no, it's fine. It's, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not, I'm obviously, I'm not very concerned about that. Uh, I'm a seasoned professional. Uh, nice. You know, I know what I'm doing. I know what I'm doing. I've been, I've, <laughs> this, this ain't my first rodeo. It's my second rodeo and I'm still very <laughs> scared. Dude, it's so funny. I'm so bad at spreading the word of this podcast people like what ha- this happened just friday this happens all the time at work this guy's like what are you doing this weekend i was like oh, i don't know just hanging out go out the baby do a podcast he's like oh you do a podcast i was like oh yeah i have two well one's in hiatus outrage factory is in hiatus derek's too busy and i'm doing this and uh, he's like, oh, cool. Where can I find it? And I was like, oh, yeah, I'm supposed to tell people to go watch yeah, the podcast. Should, yeah, I do this podcast. Uh, no, nowhere. This is the yeah. podcast. It's in my it's in my in my brain. I do a podcast yeah. up here. It's a- <laughs> Which is funny because I've never said anything bad about anybody I work with. Yeah, me neither. Yeah, it's well, there's nothing. I ain't people something to say. Nothing bad yeah. to say about people. It's not. It doesn't come. The only time that would ever come up is if somebody at your work, you had like a conspiracy theory with against or with someone. At your yeah. Work. Yeah, and I guess like involved. sometimes like we say stuff that people at work might not like, but I'm a welder and people you work with don't know about this yet. I'm pretty sure <laughs> motorcycle You're a welder, I'm a ghost. So yeah, I'm pretty sure motorcycle dudes would be okay with everything we talk yeah. about. Yeah, I mean it's I seriously, man, it, it's a mm. it's a very different ball game from where I was. So yeah, motorcycle oh, yeah. dudes totally are down with podcasts. Yeah, the only thing I could think of would be the mo- the worst thing that could possibly happen is someone you work with watches oh. this podcast and wants to talk about conspiracies at work oh, that, and they and, talk about yeah. dumb ones they're like <laughs> yeah. the moon landing's fake and you're like oh god i don't want to i have this. to yeah i've got to get a, a shirt that just says if it's not about sasquatch i don't care <laughs> <laughs> Dude, there's a guy in my work. Yeah, I know you know you're Sasquatch guy, yeah. and I know how much you love Sasquatches too, and that always makes me happy mm-hmm. that you're you're a big big fan great. of Squatch. Yeah, I'm a Squatcher for sure. You're a Squatcher. I'm a Squatcher, man. I want to see a Sasquatch. Uh, and I just want to point out that I am agnostic. I Ooh. don't believe, but I will gleefully accept any and all evidence of any conspiracy theory, cryptid. Or paranormal activity. Oh, I thought you were going like in religion. You're 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 uh, you're crypto agnostic, not uh, yeah, not like well, religious agnostic. In religious, I'm actually thinking I'm starting. I'm after we did the Gnostic episode. Yep. I'm leaning towards Gnosticism because it accepts, it answers a lot of questions I had from straight Christianity. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, that was that was a that was a heavy one when we did that Gnosticism yeah. one. Like it didn't seem like it, and then it got it got like you started doing like introspection and you're like, Oh yeah. fuck, wait a minute. This is like, yeah, I, Dude, I still think about that shit to this day. Yeah. The yeah, only thing. Uh, yeah. The thing right. I'm hedging my bets is because Gnosticism, it has a uh, reincarnation yeah. and it says no matter, like if you are, um, if you don't believe in agnosticism or in Gnosticism, you'll be reborn with a chance to relearn it. But it says, if you, do become agnostic or gnostic yeah <clears throat> it's too close to agnostic it's too close you, yeah yeah if you become gnostic and then you leave the faith then you just get taken out of the reincarnation yeah. timeline and you're, you're out of that loop fucking sent to hell and i was like wow yeah. I, I, I don't want to just jump in both feet on something <laughs> yeah. i don't know if i agree with all the way and then just get taken out of reincarnation where's derek when we need him with his extremist rules 
<laughs> yeah. 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 It's a, uh, yeah. Anything that's all or nothing is, is, is yeah. like, and is that black? Is that too black pill of me to say? I don't like all or mm-hmm. nothing. I don't like, I don't like all or nothing statements. There's like, for me, there's all always a gray area on stuff. Mm-hmm. And anytime there's a rule that's like, it has to be like this. And yeah, like, especially for something like religion, that's mm-hmm. made up to, for lack of a better term, actually being yeah. non polarative like that, like non extremist, and <laughs> believing in gray areas is actually very white pilled of you. Oh, okay. Because no, I the world the exists who, in gray areas. Yeah, what people, the baddies, uh, the corporations, and the cult leaders, what they want us to all fight with each other and have extreme opinions on everything, right. and be all or nothing, left or right. It, this but is why I don't give find you shit. the middle ground. This is why agree. I don't give you shit for listening to Joe Rogan. It's not because I love Joe Rogan, mm-hmm. and that's what that's what like that's what happened to Twitter, right? Yeah. If I didn't say I hate Joe Rogan, everyone just assumes I love Joe Rogan. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Right? Like yeah. there's no, there was no, and it's either like you're on team no Joe Rogan or you're on yeah. team Joe Rogan. And right? people were like, if you like Joe Rogan, I can't, I have nothing to say with you. Because yeah, I, I have nothing to say to you on other like, stuff. Right. I'm yeah. like, you do this. <sighs> multiple things can exist at the same yeah. time. I have many friends who watch reality TV. Oh my God, dude. So <laughs> I fucking hate that shit. I know we're off topic, but yeah. like I was, you know how I was telling you, like we only have one streaming service at any given yeah. time and we had Disney plus forever and yeah. uh, we've got Netflix now and Netflix oh, yeah. is like, it's fucking populated with reality garbage. Oh yeah. There's so much of it. And I'm like, it's people, it's so people must watch make. it. Yeah. It's so cheap to make, but, but also people must watch it or it wouldn't be. Popular, oh, they do. Right. They do. And I'm just like, God, and like I don't, you know, and I don't want to be. That might also be your algorithm too, because I don't get much reality TV on my Netflix. hmm, Interesting, yeah. It's like it's like, but that's not. I watch like, I think you should leave, and Mm -hmm. uh, and like Archer and Captain Fall, like adult comics. (laughs) You know what? You you know how to juice your algorithm. Here's a hot tip for everybody: just one day when you got like an hour, just think of stuff you like type it into netflix and hit thumbs up and then because like the way your oh, algorithm yeah. works it's all the yeah. stuff you watch it's like well he totally. watched this he must like this but if you just start liking all this random stuff that not random because it's all yeah. stuff you like you're picking things then yeah. it'll get a better feel for who you are all right okay yeah um i don't want netflix to know me that well anyway uh let's go next thing carry on <laughs> june moving right along on June 18th, the Titanic explorers die. Oh, Five man. adventuries on an expedition to the 1912 Titanic shipwreck die in a catastrophic implosion on their submersible in the North Atlantic. I have a question. Yes. I have a question. Yes. Uh, haven't they recently discovered that they didn't, they're presumed dead? Yeah. They're not dead. They're presumed dead because oh. they lost contact with it. No, they found they found the rubble, or the, they found the, like the, the nose. Co- yeah, they found the nose cone. What is that thing called again? It's not called. Well, sorry, you literally just gate? said it. What? Uh, what was the uh, what was the ship called? I think it was called Ocean Gate. Oh, okay. I never said what it was called. Oh, okay. Here, I'll, I'll click on a link. Oh yeah, Ocean Gate, privately owned company in Everett, Washington. Yeah. Got it. And it was their fifth trip down. Right. And this thing was fucking wild. If you don't know about this, just go look at it. It was the thing a guy built himself <laughs> and he controlled it with a fucking PS4 controller mm-hmm. and it didn't have a window to the outside. It just had cameras on the outside and then a view screen. So he was basically like playing a video game inside a capsule going down to the Titanic shipwreck. Whenever I read this stuff, yeah. like the dude the owner and CEO, his name is Stockton Rush. When you have a name like that, you have to die in a weird implosion yeah. of a submersible. I mean, like, you know, you never see a guy named Jeff Goche explode in like a cool way. I'm just going to die yeah. a normal, painful, long, prolonged cancerous death. Mm-hmm. Like, it's not going to be anything, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. This is I'm... also a good example for if you ever DIY yourself something. Oh, because this was the fifth trip he made down. 
Yeah. And a lot of dudes, myself included, if I make something and it works once, I'm like, it'll work forever. Never really. Yeah. You don't think about that it. It's like, didn't we talk about this last rating structure? Probably. Yeah. We talked about building stuff for sure. Yeah. But uh, yeah, if you build something, always make sure you inspect it. Look for like yeah. degradation of structural performance, whatever, you know, yeah. like cracks and stuff. Yeah. So basically what happened was this thing probably got weakened from going up and down and then exploded. Like if he would have built a brand new one, it probably would have been fine. Yeah. Yeah. So this is why they do like pre-fly checks on airplanes. And even on our motorcycles, we do a once mm-hmm. around. I, ch- I check my signals on a weekly basis to make sure they still work. Like just dumb shit like that. I never do mm-hmm. that on my car. I do it on my bike all the time. Yeah. But right? you can I look at the tires and make sure they're not rotten or there's no holes in them. I never yeah, do that you- on my car. But you it's can a get into a fender bender with a car and you'll be fine. A motorbike is like, yeah, it's... your wheel could fall off and you're dead. So a motorbike <laughs> is the one example of all or nothing. Yeah. Where you have to yeah. be all the way safe or you'll end up nothing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. For um, sure. It's very, oh, much, did you it's hear, very similar to that. Did you hear about, I don't know why this reminded me. You said something about planes. Yeah. Did you hear that whole Boeing thing? How like the door cover got sucked off? No, and so, tell me more about how this got sucked <laughs> off. So the fuselage Ooh. put these lips. So what happened was are they, long. they build these. Um, I can't remember what company it was it was for. It was like I think it was United Air. Oh, Anyways, so, yeah, Boeing just Boeing contracts builds, out to like one of the majors. Boeing builds these planes, and they basically have a blueprint of like a nondescript pl- plane. And then when companies buy them, they put like custom orders in or whatever. And they say they want these options and that options. So it's kind of like a car. And what happened was United Air didn't need a door that was built into the blueprints. So Boeing was like, lickety split. We'll just put a cover, a door plug, bolt it on, good to go. And then they subcontracted that to another company. And they didn't tighten the bolts. No way. Really? And then that's just... all it was. <sighs> and so they don't. So it was either this company didn't tighten the bolts or the bolts come loose. Like they right. didn't use yeah. their thread lock or whatever. Yeah. Because they found like 12. It, they found a number of other planes in the United Fleet with the, the same, same problem. Thing. Yeah. Lock. Always torque your nuts. <laughs> that's an important thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Lock tight on everything and torque those nuts. Okay, June twenty third, mutiny and death. You, oh, well, that, was, fuck. that was a dramatic title. Yeah, that was just because I had the hardest name to say ever. Oh, here we go. Cool. This Russian is great. I'm name. Set, everybody settle in. Here we go. Here goes Dale reading a hard Yevgeny name, a foreign name. Prigozhin. Prigozhin. Oh yeah, that, that's a spoiler because I heard it said on other po- podcasts. Okay, there here's how it's here's how it's spelled: P R I G O Z H I N. Oh, nice. Yes, you got it. He nailed it. Prigozhin. Prigozhin. I would not have guessed that if I hadn't heard it out there. Anyways, Uh, of the Wagner paramilitary group leads a short-lived military mutiny in Russia. The most serious challenges to Putin's 20s. (laughs) I I nailed. Why did you say it? Putin. (laughs) Prigozhin. Fucking and then Putin. I fuck up Putin. I fuck up Putin because I'm reading. That was unreal. Putin <laughs> nails Prigozhin, then calls him Vladimir Putin. Put a put a Y in there. Okay, the Who's most my serious cutie Putin. <laughs> the most serious challenge to Putin's twenty three years in power, <laughs> Prigozhin and other Wagner commanders would be assassinated via plane crash in late August. So, do you remember this of the Ukraine war back in I June? Seem to rem- is this that plane that flew over and they? Oh, fuck. oh, well, what happened was Wagner group is like this huge group of mercenaries. Oh, and yeah. It, like what's happening is Russia's like has their military and they're sending dudes. But it's just like the states where they hire mercenaries, yeah, like which is basically yeah. ex soldiers for hire. And Wagner group was like this big portion of their military. And the leader, Prigozhin, was upset at the oligarchs and Putin or whatever. So he says, fudge this, because what I think what was happening was the oligarchs were making calls on military strategy, and it was just dumb billionaires who don't know how to war saying they know how to war. And then Wagner group or Prigozhin was watching his Wagner buddies die or whatever. So they just like 
chuck a nut and start driving back to fucking Moscow. And they're like, we're taking power. We're taking over. And then it was the weirdest fucking thing because it only lasted like a day. And they made it to the outskirts of Moscow. And then they're like, you know what? We're not going to do this. So I think what it was, was Prigozhin didn't want to actually take out Putin. Okay. He just wanted to show Putin how serious he was about how much he hates the oligarchs and stuff. Yeah. And he was like, I don't want to actually do this. I just want to show you that I could. And I'm such a nice guy that I didn't. I only oh. hit you because I love you. I only hit you because I love you. And then like so like and then Putin was like okay well we're just gonna not kill you on the spot you're just like fucking what what's that thing ostracized and you ostracized, have to go yeah, somewhere yeah. else yeah. and then Prigozhin was like oh I got away with it and they just leaves and then like two months later he was flying in a plane and they blew it up they blew him and up they're yeah. like Russia yeah. never forgets <laughs> oh my god <laughs> yeah I don't man it's weird I don't remember this at all from mm-hmm. the news i was also i was very tuned out at that time too. Yeah. yeah and plus the like fucking ukraine war and israeli war in palestine yeah. it's just fucking so much shit happens that it's like yeah you kind of forget what happens it, it's definitely difficult to keep up on it and like mm-hmm. yeah and also yeah 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 i'm just gonna sigh i'm just gonna sigh okay much. uh We've been going almost an hour and we're only through two months. So I'm going to try to speed it up. Okay. okay? Yep. Yep. Okay. Okay. Cut, July cut. 13th. Actors on strike. TV oh, actors man. join picket lines alongside screenwriters in what becomes Hollywood's biggest labor fight in decades. Uh, yeah. So that lasted a couple months. It's over now. But that a was a big months, thing. Dude, it was a really long time. It was more than a couple of months. Well, it was, I, well, I guess the writers I friends, were on strike before. Yeah, that. the writers were on strike a long time too, right? So I had friends that were like that are in the movie industry that haven't that hadn't worked for months. Yeah, I guess. Well, July thirteenth, so it was like six months because then yeah, ended in dude, it was a long time. It yeah, was a long time to be out of work. Thing was they couldn't like they couldn't act, they couldn't write, and then they couldn't even promote stuff that was coming out. Yeah, but uh, the weird thing. Oh yeah, so the reason you're seeing a lot of animated shit was. Because that wasn't affected by the strike. Yeah. So it's kind of cool because you see stuff like that's why like Ninja uh, the Ninja Turtles movie came out and it was so good. Yeah. And the you're getting Sorry, stuff guys. with like super famous people that yeah. are doing full cast. Like what was that show that just oh um Scott Pilgrim came out. Oh, I never saw that. And it was like an animated series, yeah. but it had all the same actors from the movie. From the, from the movie. That's because cool. they couldn't fucking do anything. So they're like, yeah, yeah. I will do your animated voiceover. Yeah. Um, July 25th, Twitter becomes X. Oh Elon God. Musk's rebranding of Twitter to X elicits excitement, exasperation, and effrontery from users as they adjust to the billionaire's latest change to the social media platform. And I still call it Twitter. Yeah, everybody still calls it Twitter. And like whenever you see it referred to in the media, they're like, they're like X, formerly Twitter, right? Yeah. I'm like, well, this is the fucking dumbest shit in the world. Why would you call something X? That's so dumb. Yeah. So dumb. And again, that's what happened on Twitter is everyone was just mm-hmm. like, it's so dumb. And then you're like, I hear about this now for months and months and months. Yeah. I was like, whatever. He can call whatever he wants. Yeah, I'm he not going to refer to that. Honestly, yeah. I love Twitter now that Elon's back. Because it just feels like I see so much less libtard whiny shit. Like everybody was super afraid that they were going to see right wing fucking crazies. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe I somehow landed myself into an echo chamber. That's just me. Probably. Yeah. But I, uh, <laughs> yeah. I don't get much. I'm going to say probably on that. I'm I'm sure like, you know, you and I, we we know people. and We've met people on Twitter who like Twitter's their entire personality. So like. Sorry. Can you hold on? Yeah. I just got the tap. <laughs> uh, the like, like the on, flashlight uh, at a comedy show. Yeah. All right, get the fuck like, off the stage. Your baby wants to sleep. Shut up. <laughs> okay. She didn't <laughs> say nice. it like that. She was like, I was just that was it was implied though. It was implied. Yeah. Okay. All right. Let's go. Okay. Yeah. I was just uh, all I was saying was that uh, you and I have both like we know people whose Twitter became their entire personalities and probably mm-hmm. still is to some degree. And yeah. You're like just fucking let it go. Let it go. This is my stance X, on sorry. that. I wish my Twitter was successful enough that it could become my it personality. It could become your personality. <laughs> like, I wish yeah. 
I didn't have to go weld at a shop in Richmond because my online yeah. personality gave your me presence my... was so much, dude. I remember like we, I even went through that whole thing where like I had I had personal branding on everything, right? Like, cause mm-hmm. you know, I'm a marketing guy. Uh, like I had, I had Mr. Goats.com. I had my own website. I had a blog. I had oh, fun. Uh, a Twitter presence. I had Mr. Goats on my Instagram. I had Mr. Goats everywhere, everywhere. I had Mr. Goats, everything, right? Like cross Mm-hmm. cross platform cross promoted yeah and like it's not that i was trying to make it my personality i just was like i'm savvy enough in the media world that if you're gonna do anything you can need yeah. that and now i don't care i like literally have it as yeah. my Instagram. it was it was almost like you don't want it to be your personality but, but you have to yeah if it was going to go down you're willing to go yeah like I'm like my you have to be willing podcast, to go down. I'm not. Times. I'm not willing to go chase getting super popular podcasts. I.e., I yeah. don't get fuck. It, I don't boost anything. I don't like buy promotions or anything. But if someone were to come up to me and be like, "Quit your job, and I will pay you enough money per year yeah. so that you don't have to go have a regular job," I would be like, "In one second, yeah, we'd Dude, have to sell mattresses." Sir or man. <laughs> this segment of the Dale show is brought to you by purple purple mattresses get a great yeah. night's sleep on purple mattresses i'd do ads that'd be fun I could yeah I've, fun. I've read ads before on the radio so it's uh, i would just yeah. i don't know if anybody would want me making dick jokes about their stuff i was yeah. reading an article the other day i don't yeah. i'm trying not to go tangenty because i know we got to get okay. through this i was reading a marketing article the other day and the reason why i brought up purple mattresses and this is not a plug for this company but um i was reading like different ways to do uh sort of guerrilla marketing like thinking outside of the box on different things and purple mattresses hired eric and tim and eric to oh do, yeah like weird shit with their That's advertising so funny yeah they had a whole episode where all they were doing was sprinkling in purple mattress advertisements through the whole episode like they did like weird stuff like that and apparently it worked really well because that was their target it's about your target audience yeah so yeah there's a way to get there's a way to do this anyway go tim and eric are awesome they also did one of my favorite music videos the bubble butt music video where it's just girls with giant asses oh that sounds like Google exactly what good. you're looking for um no because then i won't i won't pay attention to the rest of the oh, podcast yeah, that's a good point. google I'll it after be, we're done podcast. you'll just see this you'll just see me doing this yeah. like what do you see doing he's just looking at ass and then i'll be like it. jeff and you'll be like bubble 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 butt bubble uh okay and moving on to august oh this is going to be hard to not get tangentialized oh, okay. the wildfires in hawaii oh, yeah. on august 8th wildfires tear through maui killing 100 people the historic town of lahaina is destroyed yeah. and the banyan tree was saved so i like i was like devastated that that tree got burnt down because it's like the second biggest banyan tree in the world and it actually oh. covers like a city block because the way banyan trees work is they grow up from the stem yeah. and the branch grows out and then and they then go down, down into the ground. And then yeah. so it's like it just spreads. It doesn't get very tall, but it spreads out. It gets wide. And if you yeah. ever go to Maui, go to Lahaina or what used to be Lahaina, Lahaina now, I yeah. guess. And you'll see this tree and it's fucking amazing. It's still there. Thank yeah, God. I, I saw it in 2018 when I was there. Yeah. It was, and it was so really uh, cool. this. Ah. <sighs> I'm so I was actually we were actually going to do a podcast on this about this specific- so many conspiracy say theories what? so many like the blue roof thing and oh like, yeah like how yeah. the lasers doesn't burn blue and then how it's a Chinese like, laser that's shooting that was and the worst part is an energy weapon yeah the worst part is it all comes down to being cheap and lazy because Maui were well versed in because what happened is there's this grass that wasn't it's not native to hawaii it came from somewhere else so it grows really fast and then it dries out so they have all this overgrown grass and the rich people's houses were saved not because they're rich or they painted the houses blue but because they have groundskeepers groundskeepers. who cut the grass so the fire didn't spread but what happened was they had derelict power lines that one fell and it sparked and it lit all this grass on fire and then fucking everything just burnt yeah yeah everything was dry yeah and then yeah, like man. the infrastructure for like it was a chinese fire laser. We've, we've already been over this it was a chinese laser and yeah. oprah and the rocks houses didn't get killed because they have blue roofs that's the yeah. whole story yeah and then like the fire hydrants didn't work because the fucking 
the infrastructure yeah, was dilapidated the old, because they didn't yeah. spend all the money and blah, you know blah, the, blah. you know like like technically hawaii that's not the tourist part of hawaii it's all very poor yeah like it's all very poverty that's why right? any they... anytime you have a beautiful place where you go to and you're like oh this is beautiful we should move here and then you talk to like one or two locals and they're like it's fucked there's just drug deals going on behind this street and like yeah. everything is fucking collapsing and people live in sheds up here and this whole thing burned down and ever since the sugarcane uh economy collapsed no one fucking comes here and it costs six dollars for a coke like yeah, talk because... to any local in hawaii and they're like yeah. fuck dude you don't know anything about this place it is fucking garbage it's a third world country yeah because there's oh i no... love it here we should move here it's so beautiful <laughs> There's no industry besides tourism. There's no industry besides tourism. And everyone there is scraping for cash. And everything that costs said, a fuck ton of money. I do want to say I'm not going to let it go without saying that there are legitimate conspiracies about weather control. <laughs> yeah, People keep yeah. saying there's no such thing as weather control. And they're fucking annoying. Look up Operation Popeye. Look yeah. up all this shit. From the Vietnam War, the U.S. was trying to do fucking weather control so they could rain rain out the trails and stuff and grew the Viet Cong. weather manipulation is real people <laughs> wake up sheeple it's just <laughs> it annoys me so much when people say like i'm not saying this happened well this did in like one of the reasons it could have happened was because china was fucking around with like pressure and then they caused like a weird wind current that yeah. fed the fires anyways but it just annoys me when people are like there's no such thing as weather manipulation when they've been doing it since like the 20s dude there's everything manipulation yeah. like i don't know I, i'm not trying to be black pill i'm trying to be white pill on the positive no, note hmm? maybe it makes vancouver less wet <laughs> <laughs> nope. maybe we have vancouver's nicer winters still the wettest it's still the wettest yeah nobody changed the weather here it's fucking yeah. crazy so. Yeah, that's what happens when you live in a beautiful rainforest. It yeah, rains. It rains. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. I always had this dream when I was a kid to live in a rainforest. I guess I forgot to say tropical before. Yeah, that. tropical rainforest. <laughs> not, not, just a, not a temperate rainforest. Yeah. The uh, One of my favorite things that I still get like lambasted for is one time I was like, because, you know, on Twitter, there's not enough room to make a statement mm -hmm. that makes enough cohesive sense. And it's that whole thing where like, Every summer in Vancouver, there's a dry spell for a few weeks and people start losing their shit about like, it's going to be a drought. There's going to be a drought. There's not going to be any mm -hmm. water in Vancouver. There'll be no drinkable water. We're going to use up all the water. And then it rains for six months straight. Right? Like <laughs> yeah. it fucking every year without fail. Yeah. They're like, no, this is a really serious problem. There's going to be a drought. And I'm like, it's a rainforest. It's never going to be that dry. It eventually yeah. will get wet again. And then people are like, and but it's historic lows. It's historic lows. And I'm like, Stand outside in December and tell me we have a problem with rain. Yeah, like we right have a, now. We have a problem with water. They're filling the fucking things by the gallon. Yeah. The problem is we don't have large enough reservoirs. That's the issue. Build bigger reservoirs because yeah. we got rain. Like anyway, three days ago, it snowed I'm gonna a get, foot. Yeah, I'm going to get and yelled at about this And then it for a whole day. Yeah. And now if you go outside, it's just the world is slush. It's, it's wet slush. enough. It's slushy, wet, disgusting. We have water everywhere. Yeah. Listen up, wet sheeple. Vancouver's <laughs> wet <laughs> enough. Wet, It'll never wet, dry. Wet sheeple. <laughs> okay, uh, moving on. August 17th, more 401k millionaires. The number of people with at least 1 million in their 401ks, not this guy, grows about 25%. Meaning there are now some 378,000 retirement plan millionaires in Fidelity investment plans. Thanks a million to dollars. the year's market rally. But a million dollars doesn't do anything. A million dollars doesn't buy a shit in most, in most economies. Yeah, it's but if you now. think about it this way, this Fidelity Investments yeah. has 378,000 accounts yeah. with over a million dollars in it. Which they means they're so making much purchasing more than that. power. Yeah. So much purchase. Yeah, totally. I'm I'm heavily invested in Fidelity funds. I'm not. Oh. I have. Ooh. I think I have like three thousand dollars in stocks, and I, one of I them. I should have said that. Somebody's gonna steal my identity now. They know one of them. Internets. I bought the the the, the stock symbol is Ruby. And yeah. I was like, ha ha! I'm gonna buy this because my because your daughter. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh wait, I'm not supposed to say that on the internet. Never mind. Oh my god, okay. that's so weird! A stock thing just came up on my computer. Weird. Yeah, they know. Listening they to know. You real listening time to me in real time. I I just want to go back to old school, where the people listening to you on the computer were actual people. Yeah, and that not, we not had robots, to put through robots. someone 
through the shit and abuse of listening to us <laughs> with their human ears. Their human ears. September 15th, the United Auto Workers strikes. The United Auto Worker Union goes on strike against GM, Ford Motor, and Chrysler parent Stellantis. The first walkouts to hit all three automakers at the same time. Hmm. And it turned out good for them. I think they got some pretty good. I don't know and if all three contracts are in, but nobody, yeah. I don't remember hearing anything about this and I don't believe the vehicle production slowed down in any fashion. No, but uh, yeah. So one of the things is, Oh, this is also brought to light. Like why there might be some such a big push for EVs because EVs aren't made by union workers where right. gas cars are. Yeah. So yeah. it's just another example of the man That's, trying to sidestep your personal rights. I would be very happy to do a show entirely on the conspiracy of electric vehicles versus gas vehicles. Ooh, so you uh, should definitely I'm, do that. I'm, I'm pro gas. I'm oh, burned. Dude, I'm pro gas too. Okay, well then that'll be hard. <laughs> that'll be no, hard. we can I'm talk like, about how we're so pro gas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can do that, and just yeah, and like yeah. Anyway. And all it'll be is one picture of the cobalt mines in the Congo and a bunch of kids digging in dirt Just with their fucking bare hands. dying. Yeah. And be like, it's you so know where cleaner. gas comes from rich white people. Yeah. You could feel good about exploiting <laughs> their labor. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. The, um, uh, the other, the other thing is about like my favorite picture of that, the couple that, uh, took put a honda gas generator in the back of their tesla so that they could go across the desert in the car yeah. <laughs> we made it across the desert in a tesla you had a fucking gas jenny in the back yeah well, don't even start with me with that why did i put this in here what's next go uh september 19th the armenia azerbaijan conflict oh, i think i God. just there was a reason i put this in here but that was a couple of weeks ago and i forgot i think it was just to point out that there are more than two wars going on yeah, so I have uh, I have some friends mm -hmm. who are Armenian, and uh, this this shit's been going on for ever. Mm. The gen the like for like the Armenian genocide and shit. Yes, it's yeah. this is still happening to this day. Like people from Armenia who live here in Vancouver because they they can't go back. Yeah, right. Uh, in this, I can't even imagine yeah. that. Sorry. Oh no, yeah. In go. the space of just over a week, Nagorno Karabakh. A self-governing Armenian region established inside Azerbaijan after the collapse of the Soviet Union is effectively dismantled. Right. Uh, October 3rd. In a first in U.S. history, the House removes Kevin McCarthy as speaker after the California that. Republican battled with GOP dissidents. October 25th, Mike Johnson is elected. Right. Uh, yeah, that's something. I don't know. That's like and stuff like... That's really only important to listeners because the McCarthy was removed because he was he wanted to give a bunch of more money to Ukraine. And then yeah. the conservatives in the government, they're like, we don't like that war. We only like the Israeli war. Yeah, but that wasn't that actually wasn't happening yet because this was October 3rd. This was like four. <laughs> we days like this war that's going to happen soon. Yeah. 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 So like we need to save our money for something else. Yeah, totally. And that brings us to October 7th. Hamas attacks Israel. Palestinian oh, militants pour out of Gaza in a surprise assault, rampaging through villages and taking hostages. By Israel's count, 1,400 people are killed, mostly civilians. Israel declares war on Hamas. President Biden would condemn Hamas attack as an act of sheer evil. And this, like, the more you look into this, it's so fucked up. Yeah. Like, when they say they poured out of Gaza, they don't tell you how they did. Because Gaza is surrounded by walls with automatic machine guns on top. So that's what, that's one of the reasons that Hamas was able to do this was because Israel was so complacent. Because they basically have machine guns pointing in on Gaza at all times that are remote controlled. So someone in a room somewhere could just shoot anybody who comes up to the wall. But what happened was they fucking tied a grenade to a uh, like quadcopter like drone and bombed like some uh thing fucking I don't know what's that word for like stuff that talks to each other techno technologically dude what are you my, all what are you my talking words are about? dumb all my words are done I just 
they, my brain they, just stopped. I don't even actually know any of this. Okay, uh, so anyways, like you know how there's like a mode of communication. Yeah, like the telecommunications for the machine guns. Right. Dropped a grenade on it, so they couldn't respond. So they couldn't. And they then couldn't, they, yeah. Then they drove a fucking dump truck or loader or something through the wall and made a hole. And then they jumped over it with like fucking big fans on their back and parachutes. And it was just like the biggest rag really? tag thing you've ever seen. Yeah, it was fucking nuts. And the whole reason that it got so bad was because BB Netanyahu had all of his soldiers up in the West Bank trying to push those people out to try and make illegal settlement settlements. Right. Yeah. Yeah, so it was, it was like it was basically that's why it was successful. It was because the the classic story of the bulk yeah. of the troops are at a, the wrong mm-hmm. end of the wrong end of the space. Yeah, and yeah, so uh, yeah, don't worry. Hamas has been uh, not taken care of, and Israel's just killed like fucking twenty thousand civilians, and we're yeah. not supposed to talk about it because this is such a dicey. Friend. It's such a dicey topic, man. I'm like, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, yeah. it's the best <laughs> it's, way to put it is this: it's like Israel declares war on Hamas for what they did, which was atrocious. And you've got to say that because people think that you're okay with it, but the Hamas is using like human shields and stuff, which is terrible, but Israel should also stop shooting 2000 pound bunker busters into apartment buildings being like, Oh, I hope we get a Hamas or two. It's just fucking yeah. atrocious. Yeah. 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 It's all political. It's all political yeah. and it's all about money as always. And so. uh, that breaking point show I listened to, they have they have really good info on the whole thing. If you want to listen to that. Okay. But That's, don't, that, it'll just make your heart break and it'll crush your soul. Yeah. None it's hard it's not good. to get all black pilly talking about this. Particular, oh yeah. Uh, Especially topic. this, this is the one topic where you like people, people just don't deserve it. Oh my God. It's anyways, it's too dark. I don't, we're trying to hurry. So, that's my excuse. Next. Yeah. <laughs> November 2nd, Sam Bankman Freed, the founder of Collapse Crypto Exchange, FTX, is convicted of stealing billions of dollars from customers in one of the biggest financial fraud cases in U.S. history. How's this your crypto? A- How's your crypto account? Oh, now? dude, fuck. It's so bad. I've been selling off some. Like, I bought crypto two Novembers ago, November yeah. 21, and it's down like 90%. Luckily, yeah, I was playing a game where I would buy like thirty dollars worth of different coins and then just sell it when it up went up ten percent. And like, I've broke even on most of it, but there's like two hundred that's tied up that's just like just gonna sit in that account and never get back. I still have crypto bots following me constantly on Instagram. <laughs> I was like. Bro, I'm not going to crypto. That's not my jam. Yeah, you're I'm fucking a button. Get over it. Yeah. yeah I don't even so, have cash. What do you think? Yeah. <laughs> you... yeah. This All Sam... my money's theoretical, I guess, yeah. at this point. So This Sam Bankman, um, the reason I brought this up was this actually started before November. November right. was just when he was convicted, when they're like, yeah, you did these crimes. You're going to jail. Yeah. But if you want to see, like, fucking the, auda- the highest audacity of someone, you got to look into this whole Sam... I hope they come yeah, out with he, a documentary. He's like cocky and nuts. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. He was it like, "They'll never catch us." And what actually happened was, oh god, I, no, I'm not going to try to explain it. It's too no. financial and dumb. But what he was doing was, he was doing like um, a Ponzi scheme, basically. Yeah, yeah. yeah in the end, and that's what happened. Yeah. November 29th, Henry Kissinger dies at 100 years old. Thank God. Rest in piss. Yeah, I hope that that's uh. That's somebody who hung on way too long. Yeah. Jesus Christ. As a pre- presidential advisor, he helped forge U.S. foreign policy during the Vietnam War and Cold War. And uh, what he's most infamous for was bombing Cambodia. Because yep. during the Vietnam War, he was like, hey, the Viet Cong might go to this neighboring country. Let's drop a whole bunch <laughs> of fucking bombs on them and kill a shit ton of civilians just to be sure. Yeah, man ridiculous if if we yeah if we've learned nothing from anything it's yeah Yeah. fuck that guy fuck that guy go to hell he's the only tortured in the ball sack the only good thing that no one ever says that about me yeah the only good thing henry kissinger ever did was he was such an evil piece of shit 
punk music got good and dead yeah. kennedys were dead born. kennedys were born out of that <laughs> yeah man absolutely yeah that's um, uh yeah 100 percent December 5th, the NCAA unveils a proposal that would allow Division I schools to pay their athletes for the first time. Oh, wow. Yeah, okay, Which that's is cool. fucking amazing. That. That's pretty cool. I should have Googled, Googled, Googled what Googled. happened with this, but my Duck, big Duck, contention Garlet. with college sports was they don't pay anybody. These yeah. kids go to school. They get, like, what, a free education, but they go to they school get- for four years. That's not entirely true. They do get paid. They get some of them sign endorsement deals for when they mm. be, when they turn professional. So some of them do get and they get enticed, right? This was that yeah. whole thing in the 90s where like the colleges weren't paying them, but they bought them cars mm-hmm. and they paid for their housing and shit like that, right? Remember that? That was like that whole thing, right? Mm-hmm. If you were a star and you're up and coming, you were getting paid by the college, but you were getting paid. That was actually a scandal though, and they put a stop to it. Yeah. But now, besides this, um, college athletes can actually sell their likeness and get endorsements. You gotta up. sell our likenesses. Yeah. <laughs> so, again, but this, this is, is thing. this is saying that the schools can actually pay athletes. Yeah, pay straight athletes. up. Yeah, it's like because right now they just I don't know when it passed, but it's like now, like say you're a super famous college athlete, Nike can give you a whole bunch of money where they used to not be able to do that. Yeah, totally. Yeah, you can get like cash money not just endorsement deals or like yeah signed on futures or whatever yeah uh and then december 8th colleges and free speech where's the line between anti-semitism and free speech on campuses the university of pennsylvania president liz mcgill resigns along with the chair of the board of trustees the highest profile casualties of debates rolling roiling colleges in the wake of the israel hamas hamas war yeah, man, it's been wild watching like how the Israel Hamas conflict has uh, basically turned has, all the right wing cucks who said they liked free speech into idiots who don't. Well, like it's just Ben wa- Shapiro watching... who's all like, I'm all for free speech <laughs> unless it's my team and now I hate free speech. Yeah, and it's, for me, it was like just the people losing their jobs over a political opinion, right? Yeah. Like that shit is wild. And it's yeah, the, the whole anti-Semitism being connected to Zionism is just yeah. fucking yeah, wild. Yeah, it's, it's not, it's, yeah, yeah. Like, you should be able to say what Israel is doing is wrong yeah. without people without, thinking without you facing, hate Jewish Yeah, people. without thinking you hate, yeah, exactly. Yeah, totally. Yeah. And it's like, it's it, it, couldn't, it couldn't be further from the truth for, yeah. for a lot of us, right? But you're living in a world where we talked about this earlier, Twitter is in charge of how people feel. And if you're not mm-hmm. with us, you're against us. George mm-hmm. Bush. But if it's like, you know, if you're like, you know, if you say one thing, people assume you mean the other thing, right? If you yeah. say one thing about Israel shouldn't do that, you, sir, mm-hmm. are Hitler. I mean, yeah, whoa, like, what the fuck? That's definitely yeah. not the, the, the case, but that's that's what's implied, right? Yeah, like if you say like it's just so ridiculous at this point they treat it like if you say you're not okay with israel doing genocide then you're genociding israel. then you're genocide yeah i was exactly. like what the fuck guys like that, just yeah. because i don't want you to blow up everybody in palestine doesn't make me a fucking muslim <laughs> it doesn't make me a, yeah an anti-semitist yeah, yeah exactly and it's like dude how fucking pissed off do you think the christians are that they're mostly left out of this big race war or religious race war. <laughs> no, they don't care. Now, this is so that's what's happening. They're not in the focus right now. So they're silently or less so not so silently taking over the United States and taking away women's rights and taking away mm, all these other call. things. Right. So the focus nice isn't spotting. on them now. So they can do all this other stuff where they're stripping away yeah. the rights of of like, you know, most of the United States, or I don't know about most of the United States, a yeah. good portion of the United States is going backwards on like on uh on on like abortion laws and stuff Mm -hmm. so the christians aren't fucking around there this is a great distraction for them to do to be horrible people in the name of their gods yeah uh that's the end of the countdown i just we did it yes we did (laughs) uh i would love to get into how the southern baptists are trying to help the apocalypse through getting israel to take all of the levant region but i think we talked oh about this boy that's another that's, that's its own show uh, that's that's a whole thing where it's like you have to know what you're talking about otherwise yeah. people and, will just like shoot yeah. you into the sun <laughs> we're already halfway there my man we're already halfway there yeah uh 
Yeah. Anything else memorable from the year that passed that you want to talk about, Jeff? No, man. The, the, the big thing for me, and I, I think I said this when we first started, when I first saw the list was yeah. like how much of that shit I thought happened like years ago, or I have oh, no yeah, concept definitely. of time anymore. Right. Like, yeah. I can't believe a lot of that happened during that last year. Like, you yeah. know how every year you start seeing those memes around New Year's where they're like, they're like, oh, 2024 is going to be my year. And, <laughs> and then yeah. every year since 2018 has been a shit show success in succession. <laughs> and is it because we just have too much media available to us or is the world actually collapsing? Or I mean, the world's been collapsing since the beginning of time. I'm not going to be black pill. I'm going to be white pill on this one. You know, or things, are things getting better? Is on there the a way change back from Hawaii? Happen? You died, and this is the dark. That timeline. happened. That actually happened. That's exactly what. <laughs> like happened. our this is a different timeline. Immortality. Yeah, I'm I'm quantum immortal, Jeff. This is quantum immortal, Dale. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, I think I got to go. I hear my baby cry. Okay, man. Uh, Thank you for joining us on the Dale Show for episode 35. We appreciate you, motherfuckers. <laughs> yeah, we love all of you. We love uh, all of you. Yeah. Goodbye. Goodbye.